uh, even though I did most of the other thing I wanted to show you, let's do a final thing as I planned in the our business. I would like to show you, let's just make sure you can see everything, a couple of things. I prepared, which didn't I prepare somewhere, the Obama data. We should have a look at the female thing. Isn't it here? I hope, I hope, I hope. Ah, here it is. That was the poll from last time. Because it, it does show some things we could, uh, should be aware of. Zero out of 12 women preferred Romney, 12 preferred Obama. Two out of 37 male preferred Romney, 35 Obama. Is that different? Does that reflect a really s uh, different between the populations of males and females? That's what we could test. Let's try. Note that I use an option here to make the simple version of the chi-square test. That's the first comment here. This is the continuity correction that I just mentioned when we did the, the, Rav or the plus approximation of the binomial with the normal. I talked about a continuity correction. If I say correct equal false, I do not make this continuity correction. You can do a chi-square test where such a continuity correction is applied. And that's the default in R. I'm just choosing false to uh, get exactly the results from the book and the example. However, let's see what the chi-square function is telling us. An important thing that I forgot to mention, that was good, I saw it. Look at what it says. It does compute a chi-square. It does find a p-value which is not significant, so no, no really statistical certain difference between genders. However, warning, warning, warning. Chi-square approximation may be incorrect. Oh, why does it give me this warning? This is because there is something I forgot to tell you. There is an important, there is a really important assumption for these tests to be okay. For such tests to be okay, even if I go back to the here. The assumption is all EIJs should be at least five. All the expected values should be at least five. Not the observed, the expected values. If that's not the case, the chi-square approximation fails. And this is what fails here, and that's why we get a warning, actually. So we shouldn't believe the p-value. Let's just, at as, as the end of it, say, what if I had the same observations, at least the same proportions, but I did a much larger study. I did actually a study which was 11 times larger, so I had around 500 people in the sample instead of just 49 people, or 47, 48 something in the sample. I just multiply my data with 11. I chose 11 because it's the minimum number to make this work. If I multiply my data with 11 and I do the chi-square test, I get a p-value with no warning. And actually, if I got the same proportions in a higher, in a more, in a, uh, in a data set with uh, 500 people, I would see a gender difference here. Note that the, one of the observed values are really zero. What are the expected values here? Uh, that's the final thing I will show you. You can actually get the expected values by writing it like this. It would tell you the expected values for this data. And the expected value in the zero cell becomes larger than five. If I did the same computation without having having uh, artificially increased my data with a factor 11, with, if I do it without artificially enhancing my data and look at the expected values, look at this, the expected values for Romney in this small data set is only a half and 1.5 for the, for the Romney percentages, which is much too low.
so the chi-square doesn't work. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Now you're up to doing chi-square testing out there. So enjoy it and see you next week.